Hey everyone, welcome back to Manatee Local. All right, I want to go over the land use meeting that happened today on Thursday, December 12th. Um, I didn't go over this ahead of time and I'm just trying to catch everyone up to see how this nifty little feature works on how the media, the YouTube video that METV recorded is linked to the agenda. So once an agenda is completed and the televised meeting is available, you can actually get to the timed sections inside of the video just by clicking on something in the agenda. So I've got the land use meeting up here and um, this was the second revised agenda. And there's actually a lot of stuff going on in this meeting so I'm going to talk about it a little bit too here because it's actually very interesting and I'm going to ask you to watch certain discussions and the county makes it easy by getting us the timestamps in the agenda. So okay so first thing you do open the agenda. I'm not going to go over how to do that again. Uh, I've done this multiple times in the last few videos. Uh, okay after all the opening stuff, the Pledge of Allegiance and whatnot. There's citizen comments. So when I click here, citizen comments, the supporting documents, if there were any, would come up on the right side, but there won't be for this particular thing. But notice the time here on the uh, video, it's gone to 1025. So the video actually will start at 1025. So I'm going to click that here. And you're going to find that the citizen comments is going to begin. So that's pretty nifty, so you can get right there. Okay, so I'm not going to play those all. Okay, uh, there were citizen all comments for future agenda items, and then there were consent agenda items, and this was the consent agenda. Um, there was a final plat, and associated documents, and a land use restriction agreement, or LURA, for livable manatee. And I think these things got yanked out um, for reasons that are understandable by uh, some of our newer uh, board members. So then they approved the consent agenda, which ended up being just number one, the approval of the clerk's consent agenda dated December 12th. Okay, so yeah, they said that it was like the shortest one they ever did. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this final plat here. So there's like a, a, the North River Ranch and stewardship date. That's two hours in. Okay, let's um, go about the uh, removal portion here. So number three, number four, number five were all pulled by Carol Feltz and um, 30 North River Ranch Improvement Stewardship District was removed. And whenever they pull the items from the consent agenda, the commissioners want more discussion or presentation on whatever the item is. And as Carol said during the meeting, she doesn't think that it's right to put certain things inside the consent agenda. Anything that is a quasi-judicial uh, item she really doesn't belong inside a consent agenda. There should be some kind of public participation or at least the opportunity for the public to participate instead of it being crammed into the consent agenda to be voted on without any kind of discussion because that's what happens when you consent it means that they don't really need any more discussion okay so okay so there was a lot of discussion here about number three and beyond okay these final plats actually i'm going to yank this up so i'm going to go to the part here in the in the video so you know it's already going to start uh the time stamp is moved to 22 minutes and 17 seconds actually i'm going to make this bigger and let me see hang on one second okay i got this set up so that you can hear the audio as well because i think this is important so we're actually going to go through this discussion here with the final plat just a bit okay so we're going to play Okay, here we go. I got it. I just wanted to make sure that we have the audio output here uh, for this video. So the final plat discussion I think is important and we're going to jump ahead of the swearing in. Now understand that this is a quasi-judicial item that we're going to talk about here. So they're going to the people that are going to testify in this proceeding are going to have to take an oath you know or any of these quasi-judicial items they have to take an oath and swear that they are telling the whole truth and all of that 
jazz, you know, because this is a, there is a judicial aspect of fact finding here that's being done by this body. So just understand that that's going to happen. So I'm going to jump ahead past the swearing in to the discussion of the final plat. For items that are purely legislative, call in comments, and any comments are welcome. It kind of doesn't make any sense. And if you listen to the whole meeting, you'll hear people questioning the logic of it. But unfortunately, some of this is dictated by the state. So any kind of remedy is going to have to be done at the state level. All right, the first item up is item number three, approval final plat North River Ranch. Ms. Knapp, will you please read the item into the record? Item number three is approval of a final plot, North River Ranch, phases 4E and 4F. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, um, has there been any ex parte regarding item number three? All right, seeing none, Apple. Uh, so the first thing that they ask if there's been what's called ex parte communication. Basically, they want to know if there's been any communication between the, any of the county commissioners and any of the parties involved as this is kind of like a lawsuit. Okay. You're up. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ed Vogler. I have been sworn. I'm a Manatee County resident. I'm here with John Neal. And John and his partners are the landowners of this uh, parcel that is subject to a plat. I must say it's the first time I've had a chance to address the board on a matter of platting, and I'm glad to do so. Uh, platting is largely managed by state law, and it is uh, largely a surveyor discipline. Uh, the case law that uh, relates to platting ide identifies it as a ministerial act that is administered by local government. And so in this case, um, you've had a highly reviewed document. The platting process in Manatee County is rigorous. It takes weeks and months. It is reviewed by surveyors employed by the county as well as engineers. And so the demonstration for uh, staff support of a plat requires that you uh, confirm consistency with the final site plan for any given project. Now, all of this is placed upon the shoulders of a comprehensive set of approvals for the development of land. North River Ranch was approved initially in 2014. We have zoning approval, a general development plan approved, authorizing in excess of 5,000 residential units. We have entered into a local development agreement with Manatee County. You have, a, a, along with us, formed a community development district, which has now been merged into a stewardship district created by the Florida legislature. So all of this proceeds the plat that we're here for today. And this is one of, uh, I think, 16 plats that have been previously approved for this very successful project. And uh, we're very proud of this uh, um, enterprise. We appreciate the opportunity to work with your staff. We think this is administrative and ministerial. And while the board has the final say, there is not a lot of discretion on these matters. And we ask that you act on it today. Okay, so I'm going to translate that into um, a very quick, condensed explanation. So basically, he's saying this stuff is governed by state law, and there isn't really any room for the commissioners to deny it. And he's right, generally speaking, but it just, it's, it's such a basic thing that the thing has been approved years ago. Uh, the problems that we have with overdevelopment are problems that were baked in years ago. So for example, I live in District 4 and what's right by me? Aqua by the Bay and the new what's called Seaflower, but it used to be called Lake Flores. 6,500 residential units, commercial as well, going up in uh, Seaflower slash Lake Flores. And that was approved in 2015. So any kind of impediment that somebody makes to it now is basically worthless you know you could try but all you're going to do is incur a lawsuit for no good reason because the power to stop these projects begins years before we see the problems with overdevelopment so 
Think about this. 2015, right? This is 2024. It's almost 10 years since Aqua was, uh, was approved, since Lake Flores was approved, and now it's come to, to fruition. Um, I'm going to link a video to this called um, How a Cow Pasture Becomes a Condo. This was a video that I clipped out of the flooding forum, and the section is given by attorney Richard Green, which will explain that process a little bit more. But yeah, this stuff happens and it's years in the making. So when you hit the point of the final plat, everything is pretty much done. You know, the cake has been baked. You know, you might just need a little frosting to finish it, but that's it. You know, this is not going to stop over development by saying no at this point. Um, but there's a very interesting and educational discussion of it going on right now. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Are there any, are there any questions of the applicant? Commissioner Phelps, you're on the board. Do you want to ask a question of the applicant? Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Staff presentation. Staff at this point won't make any uh, presentations. All right. Good morning. My name is Greg Kraus. Lots of new faces up here. Probably a new face to you Can as you well. Can you state whether you're sworn or not? Sworn. Oh, yes, I was sworn in. Thank you. Okay, so for this, this is a final plat for North River Ranch, phase 4E and 4F. The final plat consists of 239 single-family residential lots in District 1. The general location is west of US 301, south of Buckeye uh, Road, and north of Moccasin Walla Road. On April 5th, 2019, the Board of County Commissioners approved Ordinance PDMU 1726ZG. See what I'm saying? 2019, that's five years ago before we even reached the point of getting to the final plat. <laughs> so, yeah. So they have, they have the right to start building soon, but look at the lag time between then and now on this phase four and yeah, E and F of the final plat. So just letting you know. Formerly known as Havel Farms, this ordinance approved entitlements for 3,842 single family detached and attached units. On January 6, 2024, a final site plan uh, was approved under FSP 2339 for those uh, 239 units of the ordinances already approved 3,842 units. The future land use category is Urban Fringe 3. The zoning district is planned development mixed use and the parcel is approximately uh, 101 acres. Uh, that is all I have for you. Any questions? Thanks, sir. Are there any questions of staff regarding this item? All right, thank you very much. Seeing no one's on the board, thank you. Thank you, staff. We do open for public comment. I have one speaker, um, Mr. G. Molina. Please state your name, county resident. Okay, so just very quickly, uh, the public is allowed to make comments here, and that's why they get sworn in before this. I just cut out the swearing in ceremony but uh, you have to be present in order to comment on this quasi-judicial item. Three minutes. I don't think I have to tell you that every time, do I? <laughs> Ron Gildina for the record, and I have been sworn. <clears throat> Another 500 cars. Where are they gonna go? It just, it just blows me away that we have a project that has issued a certificate level of service. Mass transit? Is there mass transit out there? Although it's been approved. How does that work? Please, someone tell me how mass transit works out there. Along with the school facilities and the parks. You gotta put a pause on this stuff. And, and despite what the attorney said, it's, it's an application, okay? They're here for an application. I pointed that out in the quasi detailed <clears throat> handout that I sent you all. So don't mistake that they're entitled to it. They're here for an application approval. That's all they are. 500 more cars, right, on top of the 5,000 they're already building. It's just too much. It is absolutely too much. And really, they're, 
They don't tell us where the park's at. They don't tell, you know, is that another lift station we gotta put in there for what, a million bucks? It's just crazy. The roads aren't ready. The infrastructures aren't ready. Nothing's ready except 500 more cars. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, on the board I have Commissioner Cruz. Commissioner Phelps, Car you Car took Car yourself Car down. Phelps. Did you take yourself down? You said you didn't want to speak. Oh. Yeah, you want to speak now? Speak okay. Now, yeah. All right, Commissioner Phelps. Um, I did have this item removed from the consent agenda for several reasons, and I will continue to do so uh, for any land use items that are quasi-judicial. I've instructed staff. Um, regardless of what the item is, um, I can basically tell you that there was no consent from this current commissioner. In fact, this was probably a situation that I could see we would have a problem in the future. Um, so you will see uh, items that are of land use will not be in District 1, will not be on the consent agenda, and will require a presentation. I also do not find it uh, conducive to transparency and accountability for us to have quasi-judicial items on a consent agenda. Um, when I have found out what the criteria for putting certain things on consent agenda I were, I was not too happy with that because this is an opportunity for us to um, have a trial, so to speak, to hear both sides of things. And my job is to represent all the current residents of District 1. And many of us are here right now because of the decisions that were made in the past. We have set, spoke very much about the issues with our infrastructure not being ready to support these items. And in the process, and I agree, this has gone through a process, it has had all kinds of inspections and, and things like that, but we have to react to what the current conditions are. Uh, we have not completed Moccasin Walla Road. We have schools that are overcrowded. Um, we have uh, other items also on the agenda. And this is a quasi-judicial situation to make a decision on that our public has not even had the opportunity because we haven't been very transparent or conducive to that in the past. Um, I know what my citizens in District 1 want. I know what my citizens in District 1 need. They are here speaking right now. I am not anti-development. I want to make that clear. It is a wonderful opportunity that we have for people to make a living, for people to build houses. But the responsibility is on the commissioners to make this a quality of life and home for these people, long-term homes for these people. We have to have safe streets. We have to have adequate schools. We have to have our, our policemen, our firemen, our school teachers, our nurses, our doctors. We have to have those things to make the houses that you're building homes, and homes where people stay and feel safe and want to be part of the community. Right now, we have not completed Moccasin Wallow Road. As a matter of fact, it's behind schedule. We have problems with it. We don't have the schools already built, so this site plan that may have gone through all the motions probably would need to be revisited based on our current needs, our current traffic studies, and things that have changed. An economic uh, impact, we had three hurricanes. Don't you think there's enough work out there to get things done? I personally cannot get a roofer to come out to my house. And this is another reason why we have to have some sort of measurement of, of, of these economic factors. Um, maybe some of those roofs from Ian have not been able to get repaired because we can't get roofers to come out 
to do a single family home because they're making more money building 5,000 new houses out there. We've streamlined so much of things, as I've said. You know, what's the saying? You want it cheap, fast, or good. Don't we all want it good? And sometimes you have to look at the current circumstances. We're going to have jobs out there. There are roads to build. There's a rebuilding on our islands. And what we want to do is provide you with a community where the homes that you built are homes. And I think if you'll work with us on that and realize that this is a new commission, we did not consent to many of the things in the past. And that's why I'm here. So I think we have an opportunity to work together to make sure that we are providing you with places to build these homes in which the people who move in have a quality of life. And our obligation at this point right now is to answer to the people who elected us, the people that are paying our salaries right now. And I look at a map of these places, and if I don't see anything built, there's nobody living there right now. Right now. And that's who we have to answer to. So my vote will probably be a no. And let's come up with a better idea. Let's work together. I have no problem with working with any of our developers. But this is for your benefit, too. We want your communities to have good schools. We want your communities to have good roads. We don't want people moving here and getting killed on our highways. That's not fair. That's not quality of life. Thank you. Just taking a quick break here and just want to say that Carol's voicing the opinions of many people in District 1. I'm a I just want to take a quick break here and say that Carol's voicing the opinions of many people in District 1. A lot of people are upset after the flooding that came with Debbie and then we had Helene and Milton and there is a lot of stuff that has to get done and unfortunately there's not enough roofers to go around to get things fixed. So that's a valid sentiment. Uh, but at the same time, you're going to hear the opposite side in just a minute. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Cruz. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the enthusiasm and I, and I agree how the campaigns went. And I wish this board was here 12 months ago and we were working on wetlands and things way, way, way out east where they shouldn't have been. Um, but when you run for any office, when you take any job, you still have to conform with what happened before you. Sometimes that's unfortunate. Sometimes you disagree with it, and that's what led you to look for that job or run for that office. But you still legally have to adhere to and respect what happened before you, even if you disagree with it. This is a final plat. Now, I know this is looked upon as an opportunity to correct what you feel is an error in the past, but it, it's it's not. We have a lot of opportunity in the future. Look, this, this agenda is freaking massive. You have lots of opportunity to correct errors in the way this board's been thinking for future projects, but this project's approved. I wasn't here, none of us were here when this project was approved, but it, but it was approved. And the ingresses and egresses were approved and the open spaces were approved. This is just letting everybody know this is where I'm going to put the stuff you already told me I can put. Declining a final plat is the equivalent of if I went to build a house in a subdivision and I went to the HOA to approve what color I'm going to paint the house, they said, I'm not going to approve any color for your house because that's going to keep you from building your house. That, that's, that's not a right they have. And in state statute, they already have a preliminary plat. This is the final plat. In state statute, they can start building now without your approval. We can all vote no. This could be a 7-0 -oh no vote. They're allowed to start pulling permits on, was it 50% or 75% or because we have, we have open range in terms of how many spec homes you build. They may not be able to sell those homes, but they can build them. They, they, can, they can pave over stuff. They can put roads in there today without this approval. A 7-0 -oh no vote is going to create over 100 potential homes in there. They may not be able to sell them. And there's people that's probably under contract ready to buy them. Uh, for their families. But again, I, I, I'm with you. I, I think we need to have a, a meaningful discussion 
you know, on, on January 7th, which is a strategy session, to let each other know and to let the public know and let the future applicants know our mindset on how we're going to take each land use application going forward. And it's going to be different than how it's been in the past. I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. But there's a time and place for taking a stand and a final plat just isn't one. There's a reason it's on consent. This is administrative. It's it's not really, we're, we're being asked to approve it simply because the state's like, well, let's just have somebody check a box. Uh, th this ship has sailed. This isn't the this isn't the, the hill we're dying on because you can't. Uh, so I, I, I agree with, with your, your excitement, but I disagree with how you're going about doing it because it's not going to be successful at the end of the day. A 7-0 vote is still going to get 200 and something homes built on this property at some point in time. It just is. So uh, I don't think plats are where you want to start the fight, but I'm with you on the fight you're trying to have going forward when somebody comes to us with another piece of plant, land that isn't platted yet and isn't approved for anything, but but not at the plat level. I just I just disagree with this being the, the avenue to take to, to start fighting your battle. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Feltz. Um, I appreciate Commissioner Cruz doing this, and the point of what I was saying is exactly to elicit that, okay? I didn't set you up, but I appreciate that because this is what my constituents wanted me to say up here. And that is the other side of the coin that was very well executed. And I want my citizens to listen to that because there isn't a magic wand here. There are things that we can and we cannot do. So I answered to my citizens, I said what they wanted me to say. And I appreciate Commissioner Cruz explaining to us all that there are some things that we can't do. And I understand that, but I did it anyway. And that was a very reasonable explanation as to why some things can't be done. But we're going to go through that explanation so that we have a fair and equal ground for people to understand how things work, because they don't. I appreciate that, Commissioner Cruz. My point has been made, and so is yours. Thank you. OK, so that was an interesting exchange. And um, I think it was very educational. And again, to illustrate the point that development in this space takes years. and it's years from a cow pasture going to become a condo or a single family home in this case. So to fix what, we, what we're experiencing with aqua and Lake Flora slash sea flower needed to have been fixed almost a decade ago. And you, can, you saw here, this 2019 was when this North River Ranch was approved before anybody on this board was here okay because they're all new since 2020 and 2022 and yet they are stuck having to execute what a previous board had put in motion and they're obligated to do it under law so this is a really super educational exchange here and i don't want to spend too much more time on it because this video is already about a half an hour long but uh, I think this was very enlightening. And I'll be posting the link to my cow patty video up in the little corner. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, write your commissioners. Seriously, write your commissioners. Thanks and have a wonderful day or night whenever you get this.